now to the legal landscape. Our legal analyst attorney Dan Adams joins us every Monday morning, breaking down the biggest cases happening across Wisconsin and the country. Good morning, Dan. First up, the mother of three year old Elijah Vu and her boyfriend are returning to court today. Both are facing new charges in connection to the young boy's death. What happens next in this case? Sure. Good morning, Mallory. Yeah, today is an initial appearance, which is the first time that a defendant sees the judge uh, in their case. Uh, last week, the criminal complaint alleging the homicide theories was filed. So this is they've been in the court system for uh, another case for just child abuse. That case is now being replaced with this homicide case. Uh, they had bail set last week. Uh, today uh, will be a time when uh, uh, there's going to be a status on Jesse Vang's uh, attorney. Right now, he does not have an attorney appointed to him. Of course, every American in the court system who's alleged to have committed a crime has the right to an attorney. If they can't afford one, they have one appointed to them. At this point, it looks like the Public Defender Agency has not been able to find an attorney. Of course, it would be very hard to find an attorney willing uh, to step up into this case, given the notoriety and the allegations. After an attorney is point, appointed and they have an initial appearance, they'll set the case for a preliminary hearing where that's going to be a probable cause hearing where the allegations are going to be read out in open court. After that, of course, we're going to start getting into discovery and the actual meat of the case. So after eight months of uh, waiting, uh, this case is set to actually start getting going uh, this week. Yeah, now that Vu's remains have been found, this really has changed this case. What will the state need to prove to find Vang and Bauer guilty of homicide? Well, interesting enough, uh, Vang and Bauer are charged under different theories. Bauer, the mom, is charged under a theory that her chronic neglect, that's uh, failing to give shelter, food, and in this case, care to the child, resulted in death. Uh, that's one theory. Vang has a different theory. Uh, the state is pursuing. They are saying that repeated physical acts of abuse to the child caused the death. And in fact, they have to prove three different physical acts of abuse to the child, one of which was the actual cause of death. And in this case, uh, we know that there was repeated uh, neglect and physical abuse to the child because Bauer and Vang documented that abuse on their cell phones and messages back and forth to each other. What we don't have and what even the medical examiner has not been able to show is what actual cause or what uh, manner uh, caused the death of the boy. We know the boy was in a situation where he was being abused. We know that Vang uh, uh, tried to cover up uh, the uh, eventual death of the boy by getting rid of a suitcase where the boy's DNA was later found. But there's a really a donut hole of evidence here of what was the actual cause of the boy's death. The state's going to use a circumstantial case here to say, well, we know the boy was being abused before. We know they tried to cover it up after. We can only surmise that the boy uh, died because of an act of physical abuse in the home. So it's a little interesting here, uh, but we'll see how it plays out going forward. Yeah, and we will have updates on their court appearances later this afternoon on 12 News. Dan, thank you so much for your insight. We'll see you next Monday for more of the legal landscape.